Welcome guys to part five in our video series all about lithium and how they relate to the RV lifestyle. Um, Ryan, uh, I understand there's a, a big difference in uh, the voltage discharge curve of lithium versus a lead acid battery. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so with a, a lithium ion phosphate battery, the, the discharge curve is very flat. So it holds its terminal voltage uh, at, uh, at a high rate all the way down to sort of around about the 90% um, depth of discharge in where the, uh, the voltage then drops off very quickly. Uh, whereas uh, with a seared lead acid or an AGM, depending on how quickly you discharge the battery, it can be quite a sharp curve and therefore the, the terminal voltage drops very quickly, uh, very quickly which is below that 12 volt nominal. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it means that with a lithium ion phosphate, uh, well actually when you're powering a device, the device uh, on power. Power equals volts times amps. So you can imagine as the uh, as the volt starts to drop, in order to provide the same amount of power, it will uh, draw more current. And that then uses the available capacity of the battery a lot higher in an AGM, whereas a lithium ion phosphate, because the voltage uh, doesn't drop off, uh, it, it uses the available capacity uh, a lot more efficiently than in a so um, in practical terms, what does that actually mean? So in a, in a real world camping scenario? <clears throat> well, in, a, in practical terms, it means greater runtime. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, uh, because it's holding the voltage down, the, the voltage is actually what you'll notice, uh, that's what the drop in voltage, sorry, is what slows the device. So for example, if you were in a, a golf car, um, for, for want of a better example, the, um, the golf cart will start to slow down as the voltage drops. Okay, with the lithium ion phosphate, that the, it won't slow down, it'll hold its voltage and continue to run very well. When it does get to that end, it'll drop very quickly. So for an RVer out there who's mm. trying to charge appliances, keep mm. the fridge going and things like that, those appliances out there that need the voltage to be held up and don't operate at lower voltages, which a lot of the cheaper devices out there won't, you'll find that they'll last for longer. So that's the big benefit to the guys out there camping. So when it comes to low voltage disconnect, is, that, is there an impact there? I mean, I'd assume the monitoring system inside the battery has LVD. Uh, look, not, not, uh, not quite. So the um, monitoring device within the battery, uh, we, we, they're, they're called different things. Um, generally, they're, they're, it's a BMS or battery monitoring system. Uh, the other more correct term is probably PCM, which is protection circuit monitoring. But essentially, as I stated uh, in a couple of the other um, videos that we spoke about, it's there for, for safety. So it's there pr to protect the cells from uh, abuse and from certain conditions. So you so, shouldn't be relying upon that as your low voltage disconnect. Correct, should you? yeah. Correct. So it, it will disconnect and it will open circuit uh, at a certain voltage. In these ones, it's 10 volts, it'll disconnect. Um, however, that shouldn't be used as your low voltage disconnect. Yeah. And, uh, you should still continue to utilize a, a correct system design. Which we've got in the BMS, we've got in the, the battery management systems in the BM Pro range. So in your, your J35s and your BP35s, you have a low voltage disconnect where we disconnect the loads from the battery to prevent that from happening. So we manage that at that, at that level of the system not at the battery level, it's the best way to do it. So the BM Pro charge can well and truly handle all that? Oh yeah, no problems at all. Yeah, yeah. 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 and I, uh, just another thing on the, the benefits of the, the BM Pro chargers is that um, they do have a lithium profile in it. Um, now what, what can happen is if you do hit that low voltage protection on the, in the, in the BMS, which is below the 10 volts, the battery will go into open circuit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and therefore, and it won't, this is the only uh, aspect where it won't re-engage because it's in a low voltage disconnect. So what happens then is that if you put a load across the, the battery in a in that protection mode, it drops to, the voltage drops to zero. Now, most most smart chargers require a voltage in order to charge, so they won't start the charge. They've got to be able to sense a voltage, otherwise they won't actually activate and start going. So this can uh, and has caused uh, some issues and some concerns in where people find that they can't use their battery because it's in a protection mode. So how do you come out of that protection mode? Um, I know that the BM Pro chargers have a, a 
power supply mode? Yep. So we have a power supply mode in ours. So all of our chargers um, can operate as a power supply. So then you can boost that voltage up and then give it a burst there and then turn it back into the lithium charging right. mode. Yes. So right. you can recover a lithium battery. A lot of chargers out there can't. You can recover a lithium battery so charger. That, that was my next question. I'm imagining a scenario, a lithium battery that's been completely drained. Does it hurt the battery? Yeah, so it, it, it'll go into protection mode. Okay? Yeah. So at that, it shouldn't be left for an extended yeah. period of time in that uh, state of charge. But it won't hurt it like a lead acid battery. A lead acid battery does actually hurt it. The difference is here, because we've got electronics sitting across the top of those cells that we've seen in the previous videos, that protection mechanism in there, when it gets right down to that level, actually protects the cells. So can you, you know, is there a, a state that you can leave the battery in for a long period of time? Uh, we, re we recommend around that 50% state of charge. Yeah. Um, if you're going to leave it at, at an extended period of time, uh, the self discharge on a lithium ion phosphate is very low. So if it's left without connection, without anything connected, then unlike a, AGM or sealed acid battery, which self discharges quite quickly and then starts to sulfate and can permanently damage the battery. A lithium ion phosphate can sit um, unused for, for a greater period of time without damaging the battery. But if it does get down to that zero level, we would recommend charging it within the fortnight. Correct. Just get it back onto a charger, getting it going again. And on the flip side, if the battery is fully charged, um, what sort of voltage would um, you know, users, users expect to see? Well, it depends upon. Gun. Yeah, it's up, uh, normally it's up a, a bit over 13, 13 and a half volts ish, yeah. 13.4 volts uh, on a fully charged, um, rested battery. Yeah. So uh, by that, you sort of, you've charged the battery, you've let it rest, settle back, you'd expect the voltage to drop back and sit around that 13.4 volts. Okay. So now just one thing while we're on it, we probably should talk about the storage, um, which we touched on about it going down, but a lot of people out there, I know they plug their um, RVs in for over the winter period, then they leave them on charge for yep. the period of time. Yeah, look, in with a lithium ion phosphate, that's not necessary because no. of the, the low self-discharge. In fact, Does it cause any problems though? It doesn't, no, not, not necessarily. It doesn't cause the, too many issues as long as you've got the right voltage setting, yeah. which, um, uh, which is part of the reason why we recommend a, a lithium profile, which is the, the being pro chargers do. Um, so they can sit on float. Uh, it's recommended but that's okay it's not necessary but it's not necessary yeah um, they can sit there unused for an extended period and of time. most of our power energy. management systems like the bps and the j35s they've got a um, an energy storage mode that they, okay. people can activate so when you put your van into storage you press the button and it will disconnect all of the loads except for those that have got tablets in there keep power to that but all your main loads like it could be fridges or lights or anything else like that if you left them on by accident the bms will actually turn them off yes great yeah so guys, for those that don't know, what is OCV or open circuit voltage? Yeah, look, open circuit voltage is the, I guess it's the potential between the cathode and the anode. So this battery that we've got sitting in front of us here at the moment has got no charging on it, no load on it. It's been well rested. So if you were to put a multimeter across the positive and the negative now, that is what will be shown as what is called OCV, your open circuit voltage. Okay. Yeah, and just, just a point on the open circuit voltage and uh, giving an indication of your state of charge. Mm, sure. um, there's a big difference between your sealed acid AGM open circuit voltage and your lithium ion phosphate due to that flat discharge curve. So with a, an AGM, uh, you can uh, approximate uh, fairly accurately to some degree the state of charge of your AGM battery just by taking a, a measurement of your open circuit voltage okay because of that, that curve it can, it can tell you where you are on the curve whereas because it's a very flat discharge curve on the lithium ion phosphate you don't know where you are in the state of charge um, on that discharge curve so you could the difference between 100% and and 30% is very minimal um, in terms of the voltage measurement you take across the open circuit voltage which again is why we uh, why we work with BM Pro who have um, devices available which do actually measure the amount of current in and the amount of current out. So that's why at BM Pro we've been saying for a long time with lead acid batteries that voltage is only an indication of the actual capacity inside a battery. It's just one of the indicators in there. With lithium batteries, you actually have to be even more aware of it. Most of our vans have got systems inside which have got a display on the wall, which will give you a state of charge and it'll give you the voltage as well. So you've got to manage those two things 
when, you, when you're working with a lithium battery, you can't just be looking at the volts because the volts will drop off even faster than a lithium battery because we've had so much extra runtime in it, but it'll drop off even faster. So for RVers out there, make sure that they're looking at the state of charge on their display or on their tablet or on their phone, not just the voltage. Thanks guys, that was really fascinating. And make sure you tune in next month because we're gonna be talking about lithium batteries, wiring, parallel and in series.